very shortly uh, recently appointed exco members who worked hard to put this uh, conference together in a very short time uh, i'd like to record a special thanks to some of the, uh, the team members our advisor at rocky our secretary mr tony yu our treasurer in jimoma zaki who's also the mc here who worked tirelessly to make this event happen i also need to record thanks to our sponsors uh, who have been uh, very supportive maxis comi yes uh, TM and uh, Petronas, thank you very much. I'm going a little fast uh, because I've been given no more than 10 minutes to make my uh, speech. This is uh, evidence that Blockhouse members uh, keep the president on a tight uh, leash, you know. Uh, but I am the president, so I can bust that a little bit. Um, last night, I was trying to figure out uh, if I should leave out all the jokes and uh, stick only to the serious stuff or uh, leave out the serious things and throw in more jokes. Uh, I hope at the end of my sh uh, short speech, you'll be able to determine what I've been doing all night. Uh, we also have with us uh, bloggers representing the ASEAN nations, namely Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, Vietnam, and the Kingdom of Thailand. We welcome them all. Uh, our session started yesterday, and uh, it was very interesting having a discourse with them, uh, and we learned many new things. We were informed that uh, in Vietnam, for example, out of a population of 90 million people, 30 million people uh, regularly go online. That's one third of the population. Um, the Philippines has 22 million Facebook uh, users. Uh, I just heard this morning that uh, Indonesia ha it has the largest uh, Twitter penetration in the world, they're number one with over 20% uh, penetration. And uh, Indonesia has the largest number of Facebook users uh, at 37 million uh, uh, Facebook users in Indonesia. Um, in the Philippines, uh, the bloggers are treated like the mainstream media. And uh, what is interesting is that even the Philippine presidential candidates are interviewed by the blogs. Yeah? Uh, and uh, we have seen in the, in the news in Egypt recently the overthrow of a government was facilitated by the blogs, by Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, I would term this the digital uh, tsunami that is enveloping the world. Uh, from our discussions, this conference has also arrived at a brief, at a brief uh, resolution, which we call the uh, Kuala Lumpur Resolution. The main points we have agreed upon are to establish an uh, ASEAN blogging network, to achieve common values and aspirations, promote freedom of information and expression, promote ethical practice in the blogosphere, and also to meet regularly among the ASEAN bloggers. To give you a little bit more background on ourselves, the Malaysian uh, bloggers who make up our membership are mostly socio-political bloggers. Uh, in the local parlance, it is so poor. Our interests are wide-ranging, uh, covering politics, economics, social issues, defense, religion, and uh, other matters. Bloghouse Malaysia has been uh, legally constituted and registered since uh, January of this year. And uh, uh, we are most happy and proud to announce at this juncture that uh, Yang Ahmad Barumat Tun Dr. Mahathir Muhammad has agreed to serve as a patron of Bloghouse Malaysia. <laughs> Thank you, sir. As you're all aware, Dr. Mahade is no stranger to blogging. The MC uh, said some things about him. Uh, his blog is chatdead.com. Uh, it is one of the most popular blogs in the country, without doubt, with over 30, 34 million hits. Uh, indeed, uh, Dr. Mahade is the envy of uh, the rest of us, OK? <laughs> I'd just like to say that in the blogosphere, uh, bloggers are either anonymous or they may blog in their own names. I used to be anonymous at one time, but things happen now, I'm not anonymous anymore. Uh, anonymous bloggers are welcome to join our association. You can use your own name. You do not have to tell us your blog name. However, anonymity is only possible as long as you are not uh, discovered. Uh, and discovery usually happens if the 
discovery usually happens if the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission or the police come after you. <laughs> then uh, you may become well known. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I never imagined that one day I would be president of an association whose members would go by names like Big Dog. You know, in Malay, in Malay is Anjing Besar. Eh? Uh, if, you say, if you just say anjing, it's not polite. The bazaar has to come with it. Uh, that's a gentleman right there. <laughs> in his blog, his bark is also his bite, which uh, can be quite uh, painful. I think some people are aware of this. Uh, we also have an interesting bird who calls himself a barking magpie. Uh, despite the feathers, or in spite of it, uh, he is perhaps envious of big dog. His tagline says, remember, electricity is from electrons and morality is from morons. <laughs> So uh, it, does not, it does not provide any more clarity about his flight path, but not to be taken lightly. I enjoy reading him. His understanding of matters is quite sharp. So these are some of the people around us. And uh, there is some method here. All this translates into number of hits uh, or, or visitors on each blog. Yeah, we always want to know who is a millionaire. A millionaire blogger is a, is a blog that has hit the first million. So uh, uh, our executive committee alone of the association uh, we have, uh, 12 or 14 of us, we have accumulated in excess of 30 million hits or visitors to, the, to our various blogs, and uh, our cumulative daily hits uh, reaches about 100,000. That is as good as the readership of some uh, daily uh, mainstream media newspapers. I hope uh, you guys are here, don't take a slide, I'm just saying this. Yeah? And uh, these numbers are repeated every day. So in short, people read the blogs. In short, the bloggers do have a voice. Okay? Um, as the president of Bloghouse, uh, I know that our members are committed to improve the society that we live in. That is why we blog. Yeah, that's why we blog. Bloggers seek to achieve this by influencing the public opinion wherever and whenever, whenever, wherever and, and whenever it is accessible through the medium of the internet. And uh, the numbers provide the evidence for this. Our friends from ASEAN also exchange information about uh, new laws that are being crafted to handle the internet. I think the same applies to our country too. Um, unfortunately, most of these attempts seek to stifle the, the new media, the new media or what uh, our friends also term as the social media. I would like uh, to remind you of uh, what, uh, what is known as of a, the Sputnik moment. If you remember, the Russians launched the first artificial satellite into space. It was called the Sputnik in 1957. Uh, what happened was it caused a major panic in the West, especially in America, because the Russians had made a quantum leap in their technological uh, advancement. The, left, the, the West was left behind at that time and for quite some time. So that was considered a Sputnik moment where a major change, uh, a paradigm shift takes place and someone moves forward where someone else is left behind. Uh, my view is that there is another Sputnik moment going on right now. Uh, the new media, the blogs, the Twitter, Facebook, Internet, they are providing that quantum leap in the uh, dissemination of news and views. Uh, on the Internet, one person with a smartphone uh, can be as good as uh, a TV station. The Internet uh, can even show you where to look for lost watches. Yeah? Uh, so my, my point is, so, <laughs> within, four, within four weeks, yeah? it's very fast. Anyway, uh, so my suggestion is let's not miss our spaceship. Let's not be on the wrong side of the, of the Sputnik moment. Uh, the idea should not be to stifle the new uh, media, but to adapt to it and uh, continuously encourage its, uh, its growth. Yeah? I've come to my final point now, which I heard this morning. Uh, I believe that uh, we need more space. We need more space to allow uh, uh, expression and discussion. Yeah? And uh, in Malaysia, uh, personally, I'm not afraid of the ISA, and I have personal knowledge of the Sedition Act. Uh, but I think what, what, uh, what can stifle uh, discourse, discussion, and, and, and uh, prevent uh, opening up the, the sphere is our libel, libel laws. Libel laws is where someone can sue you for saying something. Uh, I've said this before, and I'm, uh, I take every opportunity to repeat it, and I heard it this morning too. Uh, in some countries, in the United States, and this morning, 
there was a speaker from India who said that uh, there is such a thing as a public personality. Public personalities are people who put themselves to the public uh, for, for, to make a living uh, uh, for what they are. Uh, of course, this would include uh, politicians uh, and uh, bloggers, writers, uh, uh, businessmen, anyone you know, who puts himself to the public is deemed a public personality. And in some jurisdictions, a public personality is not given as much protection under the libel laws because the public has a right to comment. But unfortunately, or fortunately, or either way, not every member of the public has the same uh, degree of understanding, same level of eloquence or, or education to say what they want to say in a proper manner. So this may give rise to libel, but nevertheless, uh, uh, the laws are less easy on public personalities to sue people. And I think, uh, I hope that we will, we will uh, consider uh, this uh, angle in our libel laws you know, for the future. That's all I want to say, and I hope I'm within 10 minutes. And thank you very much.